Maybe you are wondering if you are a consultant. Wait, is this how we want to do the introduction? All right. Or you want to learn and apply in your own life how this elite group of highly gifted people, this pinnacle of humankind, works and functions. In either way, the following seven points will show you if you are a consultant. And if you stick until the end with me, there will be a rapid fire ultimate test to find out if you are a real consultant or you need to step up your game. First sign you are a consultant. Yo, Kevin, what happened yesterday between you and this girl in the club, man? Uh, let me take a step back and let's jump into some general specifics right away. So what's your suggestion for our business units, Mr. Warner? I mean, moving forward, we'll go after the low hanging fruit at the end of the day. Babe, let's get married. I mean, babe, I really think we need to take a step back here, see if we have consensus from all the stakeholders and then really stress test this decision, right? You are a consultant if you use consulting jargon. Now, if you are an aspiring consultant, you know, and you have been around consultants in the past or you are already a professional and you work sometimes with people who have a past in consulting, you might have noticed they have a very specific way of talking. Now, of course, there is a certain structure that they use in talking, how they structure their conclusions and so on. And we can talk about all of that in another video. But there's also a second thing, and that's the so-called consulting jargon. Now, there is two things you need to know about it. There is an upside and a downside to consulting jargon. The downside is it is quite imprecise. The upside is it is quite imprecise. Now let me explain. Of course, when we say things like let's take a step back or we need to take a 10,000 feet view of it or let's do a deep dive, things like that. Of course, sometimes they are a bit imprecise, right? So people might not really know what we're talking about when we say, okay, we want to deep dive in this analysis. Then I, yeah, but how exactly? Like, what do you do there, right? So of course, in that sense, sometimes it's a bit imprecise and it sometimes would be nicer if uh, we would use the specific word that actually fits this certain situation and also tells the client, for example, what exactly we are going to do. But on the other hand, that is also an advantage because consultants consciously sometimes don't really want to give away what they are doing, either because they don't know or uh, because it's just too confidential and they want, don't want the client, for example, to look into their inner workings, how they are actually going to do something. So the next time a consultant tells you, I don't know how robust that is. We might need to take a step back, get some buy-in, stress test the solution and then deep dive right back into it. And you're like, then chances are he or she really doesn't want you to know what they are talking about or they don't know what they are talking about. And then you need to ask for clarification. Second sign you are a consultant. Oh no, my timesheet. You are definitely a consultant when you start having dreams about forgetting to submit your timesheets. Now, if you are not a consultant, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Timesheet, what's going on? Now, the timesheet, as in so many other industries, is being used to track how many hours you have spent working on an actual project as a consultant. And contrary to other industries, this timesheet in consulting sometimes is quite important because, uh, because it can either a, you know, impact your evaluation at the end of the year or B, it can have an impact on your salary. Now that doesn't always need to be the case, to be honest, but also the firm is going to push you very hard to always submit your timesheets on time because for them, that means they can very accurately track what's going on in their firm, right? Like how many consultants are actually working? What's the capacity internally? What's going on? And this gives them more clarity on their financials 
internally. And in fact, forgetting to submit your timesheet is kind of like a running joke in consulting, you know? So you will have lots and lots of memes about forgetting to submit your timesheets. In fact, let's just check it right now, you know? I swear, if we don't find three memes in the next, you know, one minute me browsing a meme Instagram page, then I'm a total fraud and you should immediately put in the comment section the comment, you are a total fraud. But if we find them, you need to leave a like. All right, so I obviously didn't manage to do it during the day, so let's just do it right now and let's go through what we have here on this memes page, one of these consulting memes pages. Sleeping in late on a Saturday and suddenly remembering you didn't submit your timesheet. Look at this, he is clearly shocked that he didn't submit his timesheet. I mean, that is a total disaster, right? When the pilot is no that but no one knew you. This is also that moment when your weekend is going pretty great, but you suddenly remember you haven't submitted your timesheet yet. So this dog is uh, obviously very shocked and also a little bit cute. And you also see my uh, China uh, internet completely sucks. That's because Instagram is blocked here um, and I need to access it through a VPN. We're going to find one more, one more. People who can't remember to submit their timesheets once every week or every two weeks, federal practice consultants. Meh. Ah, third sign you are a consultant. Honey, I don't think your shopping list is missy. Mamma mia, this analysis for a pizzeria is not a missy. Also in the Slavic Mafia, we make sure our cases are missy. Thank you, babe, but I don't think your suggestions for what we could do this evening are missy. You are a management consultant when you exactly know what missy is and you analyze every situation in your life and even suggestions from your friend whether or not they are messy. Now let me explain what am I talking about. Messy is that something to do with Missy Elliot? No, of course it doesn't. Messy stands for mutually exclusive, collectively exhaustive. So if, for example, if you're trying to divide a house in a messy way, you could say we have floor one, we have floor two, and we have floor three. Perfect, messy. It is mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. Now what you can't do is we have room number one, room number two, we have the bathroom and we have the living area and then we have the kitchen. Because maybe living area and kitchen are both the same things, you know? So the living area is kind of, a, you know, you have a sofa there, but you also have the kitchen in the living area. That means by saying we have the living area and we have the kitchen, you are counting this double. It's not mutually exclusive. At the same time, you can't say we have floor one and we have floor three, because that wouldn't be collectively exhaustive. You're obviously missing floor two. Now what happens to me super often in my current job, you know, here in venture capital startup acceleration in Shanghai is when colleagues come to me and they tell me, hey, you know, we need to do this and that. And I have a couple of suggestions, suggestion A, suggestion B, suggestion C. And I immediately in my head think automatically, is that really me see, you know, like, does it make sense or is there additional option? That's like the main, I would say, uh, advantage of thinking in a me see way. You're really trying to cover all the options there, you know? And so you immediately spot someone who is a consultant or who is not a consultant in the way they are making these statements. Are they me see or are they not? Fourth sign you are a consultant. All right, so we have a typical Excel file here. Now we can do a couple of things. You know, first I want to unmerge these things here because that's in my eyes not best practice. Then uh, for some reason we would like to add a separator here. So we just quickly do that, you know, then we bolt this stuff. This thing I would like to uh, be, you know, be able to pull it in and out whenever I want and then for some reason, you know what? I want this whole thing to be black. <laughs> now you might have noticed two things here. First of all, I did all of that without using my mouse, just with a keyboard. Secondly, it didn't really make 
any sense whatsoever. But I did something cool without using my mouse in Excel and that's what counts. As a consultant, you usually try not to use your mouse. Now this, let's put a caveat here, you know, investment bankers will be much more strict about that, you know, and for them it's a code of honor to not use the mouse when they are excelling. For consultants, it's all right. You know, you see many consultants using a mouse, but you will see the ones who are really skilled at Excel modeling, not using a mouse, simply because it's quicker. You know, you don't need to switch from keyboard to mouse. You're just staying on the keyboard. Brilliant, you get into your flow state, you know, and you compute the numbers. I loved that feeling. Obviously, I am exaggerating, right? So <laughs> it's not like someone's going to slap you uh, on the back of your head if you are using a mouse. And uh, I have known many consultants who I admired a lot, to be honest, um, building, some of them building the greatest models I have ever seen use mice. So this is more of a joke rule, but I would say there is kind of a cult of people in the consulting and in the investment banking sphere who would say if you use a mouse you know you are showing that you are not 100 percent proficient in excel now everybody can think about that what they want i just want to put it out there okay sign number five that you are a management consultant hey kevin are you free for a meeting at 10 yeah sure both work quite well what do you mean both i mean 10 a.m or 10 p.m no, I mean, that's not possible. I work from 9 to 6. Ah, okay, you work a half-time job. Now, chances are, if you are a management consultant, you are probably working long hours. And now, let me tell you what might be the bad consequences about it, okay? So, it's totally normal that as a management consultant, you work 70, 80 hours, something along those lines. Sometimes it might be even more leading up to a steering committee. So if someone tells you, you know, let's have a meeting at 10 or 11, it's seriously, you don't know what they are referring to. Similarly, if they say, let's have a meeting at one, that might still mean you guys or girls are meeting at the hotel lobby, you know, at 1 a.m. in the night. So totally normal. Um, of course, the bad consequence of that is you lose a lot of private life, you know, and if you have a, a partner, if you have a lot of friends in your city, first of all, you don't see them because you're probably working somewhere else in a different city or even a different country. And then secondly, also, if you are at home, chances are you're working really long hours. So you need to balance your work life relationship, uh, balance pretty well. So if you're interested in hearing more about this topic, check out my video, 10 reasons why consulting is not for you. Uh, we're linking it here and this is highly related to this one. So you can deep dive into the topic a little bit more. And of course, it's also available as a podcast. So on every, you know, just search for management consulting insights or Kevin John, I'll pop up. I promise. Sixth sign, you are a strategy consultant. This thing right here by the way here you see a bit of uh, Shanghai beautiful now, of course the great thing about a cosmetics bag like this one and please excuse mine looks super super damaged already so you can you know you can close it and then you always have all your cosmetics in here and you don't even take them out you know so you just have a second toothbrush and things like that you have it in here and whenever you travel, you just take that thing and you boom, put it into your luggage. Now, going back to the point I made before, you know, as a consultant, you are traveling all the time. And what that meant for me was my Remova, in that case, uh, which is also very typical for consultants, was always packed and ready. So I needed a maximum of 10 minutes to pack my stuff, to have everything ready and to be ready to go to the airport. So my suitcase would typically even contain already, you know, some clothes and my, uh, you know, suit and my shirts and I wouldn't even touch it. So most of it would be ready. You know, I probably would have to change a couple of my, uh, you know, underwear and socks or something like that. But then most of it would be ready at all times. And just a couple of tips, you know, here you would obviously put your shirts so that they don't get wrinkles 
Um, and with my, uh, you know, with my T-shirts, what you do is you s roll them up, you know, so that they take up less space. That's something they do in the army. And then the rest of it, you know, you stuff out with your underwear, more or less. And then you can, like, protect your uh, tie a bit in pockets like this. Of course, there's many more tips, you know, let's do a video on that at some other point in time friends all right now before we get to the grand final let me say one thing you know i started a career service called pumpkin so if you want to get on the phone get a free career advisory call and figure out how you can get into consulting but also into banking private equity venture capital hedge funds and so on we can help you you know we have a lot of coaches we have the best coaches from you know the best backgrounds we have we have the best of them then uh, check out the link in the description below pumpkin pumpkincareers.com um, and yeah let's check it out let's work together see if we can if we can work together and if there is fit sign number seven that you are a consultant last sign and this is the ultimate test if you are a consultant or if you know enough about the consulting industry to really know what's waiting for you is you can keep up with this ultimate rapid fire test and understand what's going on hotel status minimum gold better platinum frequent traveler status yes laptop brand lenovo suitcase remover or to me double spaces i can spot those from miles away major life decisions perform a swot analysis in every case name of your first child before it's born deliverable all right last coolest comment i have received was by aditya people are not stupid they are just less intelligent supposedly that's something i said in the video pros and cons of working for a consultancy highly saluted uh, write some comments down below and maybe you're the next coolest comment and now lastly check out my video 10 reasons why consulting is not for you it will really help you take a step back and then do a deep dive bye bye